Wait, <laughs> welcome to the Whiskey Vault. Hi. 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 Just I'm trying to get previous conversation. Yeah, let's get some distance. Yeah. <laughs> Take a moment. <laughs> Just uh in space. Nobody refocus. can hear no. you. Screen. Nope. 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 Anyway. <laughs> So, do you listen to talk radio, not talk radio, but like morning show radio, like two personalities talking about shit and laughing and cutting up? I think in the modern vernacular, typically in the form of a podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, podcast, sure. But like not radio. Two people just kind of like. morning radio. Well, if it's podcast too, or YouTube, or like just two dudes that are effectively following the model of just like random conversational, you know, inside jokes and sure. inside stories there and their many, own fans. Any, many, there are many podcasts that I listen to, but okay. not Morning Radio. What? This one was a uh, barrel pick by the uh, Ben and Skin Show. Okay, where are they out of? Dallas. Nice. Oh, wait. Is it Dallas? DFW. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they did the Balconus there. Yes, they did. Yeah, yeah, and Not yeah. only that, but they picked... A pretty cool one. Yeah, yeah. So, so this is, is the Ben and Skin Show. Ben and Skin Show. Right. But no, 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 no. That's not who donated it. Larry Polsky, magnificent bastard, donated it. Larry Polsky, you magnificent bastard. But I went and watched, and they released it this single barrel into the stores in DFW. Yeah. There were lines of people nice. waiting for the liquor store to open, and all the interviews as they walked by yeah. were like, "Well, I'm a Ben and Skin fan. I'm yeah. a Ben and Skin fan. I also yeah. like Balconus. Yeah. I had to get this bottle the even perfect, if I don't like it. Perfect crossover. Yeah. So you know what we're gonna have to do? We're gonna have to compare their pick. So I planned for that, but it's not gonna be a total AB comparison. Why? Because they chose a peated cask. And about, we only single oh. barrel we have, we don't have any other peated single barrels yeah, out there. Well, then but we do have the generic right. Balconus peated, so, I think. in the comparison that we're doing now, because Daniel's actively pouring. Mm. Oh, yes. Was that a hint? <laughs> uh, Was I supposed to do something? So the, the difference between the barrels, that's always an interesting AB, but this isn't yeah. maybe an exact comparison because it's a peated barrel. But even so, I'm very yeah. eager to see what the different barrel and that peated barrel. And they finished it differently. So this was 33. Wow. All right, so they actually made this like a unique, unique thing. Yeah, 32 okay. months, uh, just X4 Roses barrel. So it's used oak its whole life. Interesting, okay. 32 months, yeah, yeah, almost yeah. three years. Yeah, yeah. And then it spent the last three to four oh, months. Dude, I can, three sm months. I can smell it from here. Oh, I know. Yeah. It's been the last three months in a Sautern cask. Wow. Uh, uh, French, does, you know, the dessert wine, yeah. white, is, or yeah. This thing got um, around. So peated. Mara Sauter, or not Mara, that's ours. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Peated Golden Promise, mm -hmm. Scottish barley, yeah, yeah, yeah. brought over, almost three years old and four roses barrel. Yeah. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna grab the peated malt if I can reach it while I still can find it. Whale sh I'm trying to hold back until you return, but. Oh, wait, dude. wait, wait. wait. Oh my God, that is. No, uh, just talk, just speak up, it's fine. If you like. To talk to tomatoes. If you like uh, peated whiskeys, this has a lot of that character, but it also is unique. It's not squarely an Isla release, but that kind of that smokiness that, it has the molasses. Oh gosh, there's so much going on, hold on. Uh, it's got like a sharp cheese. It has the molasses from the Texas whiskey portion of it. Well, it's got like that smoky, almost, is that a briny? Shoot a monkey. Like a burnt end, like a, like a barbecue pit, burnt in kind of crispy meat. Damn it. Damn, dude. <laughs> it's a train wreck over here, Rex. You can't see it right now, but do it's you, a train wreck. Do you need an adult? Turns out we sold out, We drank, the Psalms drank all of our peated balconas that we have on the list. So we don't have one. But I also found one that I thought maybe this is a peated cask single barrel. Yeah. And so I went to check the smell and the cork broke. <laughs> so I can't do that one okay. either. Uh, this one also has that light colored label that might mean it's peated. Mm -hmm. And it's another single barrel. I'm trying not to get too far ahead of you on this. Nope, that's not peated either. I'm trying not to get too far ahead of you. Okay, yeah, I'm we're just going to have to judge it on its own. Okay. Mark, cassette, go. Oh, good lord. Yeah. So that is like... It's very present. It's very intense. It's potent. It's vivacious. That is uh, 
Ardbeg direction of meaty smoke, mm -hmm. hefty mid palate or but, mid nose. But you, you, if you put your nose in this, you're saying th I'm finding very familiar Isla notes, but I'm not squarely in Isla territory. There's that molasses from the the Texas. It's not whiskey. really briny. I'm I'm getting smoke and ash, but none of that salt water. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's and definitely not the dominant note. It's more of like a burnt-in Texas brisket. Yeah, no, I'm getting like yeah. a salty meat, like a like a salted. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god, dude, that smells now. And if you sit there long enough, yeah. the peat sort of uh, drops a layer, and then the sweetness comes through, even in the nose. So this, I think, is pr we're still in the nose. Quite frankly, um, I expect this to be amazing on the taste. But mm -hmm. this, I think, is a perfect example of why. Even if you consider yourself to be a very, very specific kind of whiskey drinker, people are like, I'm a bourbon person, yeah. or I only drink uh, Isla. Mm -hmm. There are often bottles in other categories that you will probably find a lot of stuff that you're going to love. For example, I think Isla lovers would adore this whiskey. Yeah, absolutely. So much in there that is familiar and nice and beautiful. Depending on how it time, drinks. Yeah, yeah, we still haven't even drank it. Just no, we've had this. friends who don't like peat, but some for some reason like Octomore. Yeah. I think those people could, this could be in their territory. Okay. All right. I'm going to. Oh, that drink's really gentle. I was expecting for the nose to just, the palate to just obliterate with smoke and char. Mm hmm But it didn't. It's definitely smoky. Yeah. Definitely not, but yeah. ashy is not the right Hold word. Uh, Densely sweet. A few things. You're not saying anything I do disagree with, but I want to give context. Gentle for us. <laughs> no, compared to the nuts. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. But, but like it's 63 point whatever percent alcohol. This is throwing around some heat, but the flavors, this is the things that we say about high proof whiskeys. If it's really high proof, great. If the flavors are keeping up at that level, my God, these flavors are keeping up, but it's not quite as. But even for high proof, it's not got that few high proof impact. No. Like I'm looking for that stag it's where not, it, like it throws every inch yeah, of its. It's not throwing elbows, 63%. but it is kind of like a big swell. Yeah, it's flavor dense. and heat. Yeah, it's a big swell there. Um, but at the same time, I think the most recognizable elements from Isla are near the finish. What's weird the is front end. Hmm? I'm visualizing a nuclear explosion. Okay. So like you get this sort of like. Boom, and then a flat mushroom layer, and it just sort of swells out and envelops your whole palate. Mm -hmm. And then as it's spreading, these fruit notes come right out of the middle of that, and it keeps going up another layer. This is like you threw some really dark, salted fruits on a grill, on a barbecue pit, on a smoker even. Mm. What is that? I'm almost there's getting like raisins. A, yeah, I was about to say prunes. I was about to say there's like a prune quality. Like if you... Could you smoke a prune? Could you peat smoke a prune? You can smoke anything. <laughs> Milk anything with this. <laughs> uh, it's like a smoke prune quality. There's that, yeah, and the molasses is kind of like the basic sweet sweetness that's in there. Holy hell, though. This, okay. So I dig the fact that if they're going to bottle something as an interesting, funky adventure, this is it. They're going to pick it. They did Whew. something like unique, really remarkable, and funky. And interesting, and it came together very well. I think I'd be very curious to know all the people that are lined up, right? They're big fans yeah. of the show. How many of those people were fans of Isla? Because in my head, if you aren't, uh, if you don't enjoy those types of notes, and then you get into that thing, right. man. Well, they also released a Rumble at the same time. Okay. So there were two bottle uh, picks. Okay, yeah, yeah. So I'm just thinking, like, if you're a fan, you buy both, and you're gonna either like the Rumble. Or the this or both, but you'll have some. You okay. cover their bases. So the fact that there's a rumble is going to be like just mm -hmm. a bit more of a classically sweet, dense, rich, beautiful thing. Yeah, this is going to be like the smokier. I tell you that beast. nose does not settle down. I keep going back, and every time the nose is still oh, aggressive and and meaty and rich, it does get a little more ashy mm -hmm. as I keep going back to it. There's like that sharp cheese note mm -hmm. that reminds me of Octomore. Mm -hmm. And then there's like a dank cellar type of quality to it with these dark fruits. It's just, it, it is the definition of... Yeah, it does have this mineral water. 
Ah, yeah. A there. cellar note. Like mm -hmm. when you said cellar, I think yep. a dripping cave mm -hmm. mineral drip. Yeah, there's a minerality to it. Like sure. you can smell stalactites and stalagmites. Gosh, I can't stop smelling it. Yeah, that'll do. Mm. Ah. That's how you do it. Ah. There's the... Ah. Ah. Metronome. Nice. Spelled G and Omi. Uh, Let's see what you did there. Uh, being a California resident, seeing all those potential non earthquake proof bottle gives me the heebie jeebies. It's been a minute since we had an earthquake. Yeah, that. well, no. Yeah. But we don't. But uh, yes, this could not work in California. This level of like, fuck it, let's see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> Would not work in California. Just the bottle's right on the edge. Wait, there's not as bad right now. We right. bought some more room, but. But yeah. Uh, so speaking of Balconis, mm -hmm. well, the Balconis escarpment. Yeah, yeah, we're on it. It Dick, starts on this property. That's what the name's from. Yeah. And there's basically this huge ridge. Uh, well, let's call it what it is. Yeah. It's an escarpment. escarpment. <laughs> yeah. Going through the center of Texas. Yeah. And you can see like the land. There's you know, different, I think the mall. Yeah. Burton Creek Mall is like yep. right on the edge of the escarpment. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's speaking of earthquakes, uh, if we ever do get one. Yeah. Because escarpments where two plates collide. Sure. Right? That's not uh, not a fault. A, a fault is a rift in a plate. An escarpment is two plates hitting and one pushing up higher than the other. Okay. <laughs> Michael Stone. I wonder what whiskey made from sunflower seeds would taste like. Okay, not a grain, so it's <gasps> not a whiskey, but could be really interesting. So, no, sunflower seeds are seeds. Seeds aren't. Yeah, but remember way back in the day, if we kept it, well, ah, there was somebody gave us a bottle of a sunflower spirit. Yeah, could be a fun experiment. Yeah, yeah that I thought was I'd a long already time ago. pulled it, and then until you read the comment, and I remembered I hadn't pulled it yet. <laughs> do you have a special funky spirit section over there? I do. I have not whiskey, but we should probably hold on to it section. Yeah. Okay. Um, and that's what. But it's a really tall bottle. And so there's only two places in this corner it could be. So it, every time I go back to the I found notes, it. first approach, there's like a smoked sharp cheese. Second approach, you start to pull back the curtain on some of those darker fruits, those prune notes. Third, more of that sweetness, that molasses starts to, to show up. Yeah, it's just a lot going on there. Check this out. This is sunflower. A spirit distilled from sunflower seeds and corn. Oh, acorn. It's called Taza Ray Sunflower. Yeah, it's uh, it, it tastes a lot like, it, not, I haven't tasted it, it smells a lot like um, candy corn. Hmm. Well, yeah. Like a buttered candy would. corn. Whoa, that is musty too. Uh, almost, um, oh, there was, a, there was a funky vegetal note. What is that? It's, um, it's sesame oil. Okay. Oh. And soy sauce. Like when I'm doing a little like sweet glaze mm -hmm. for, yeah. Very sweet. Oh. And Ooh, I don't like the smell at all. It actually smells closer to baijiu. Uh, like our shochu. Uh, you do get a little burst Ooh. of sunflower seed flavor, which is nice. That's weird. That's, you, did you get the sunflower seed? I don't seed remember then? that at all. Yeah, yeah, I, that, like the shell. Yeah. yeah, which is kind of, I think, the main thing that you would want to look for in a project like that. Mm -hmm. Does the Did essence it of the original ingredient come through there? Yeah. Damn, that's amazing. I'd love to try that baby blue you said they did in addition to this. Oh, no, 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 rumble. Rumble. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'd love to show that rumble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rumble. All right, here's to fight stealing and drinking. If you fight me and fight for a friend. Steal, may you steal your lover's heart. And if you drink, may, may you, you drink, drink with us. us.